Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I am Jake. I am Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel Our Magic. We continue the Pioneer series. War of the Spark is up. Jake is trying a Jedi mind trick. Jake, are you excited to talk about War of the Spark? I'm trying to knock the camera over using just my mind and it is not happening. Before we can talk about the cards, we need you to go below. Click like, click subscribe. It really helps the channel as we continue to grow. Absolutely, it does. Get down there and do the good work on our behalf and we would appreciate it. Let's jump into the cards and as we do, I'm going to give the caveat we are picking the sleeper cards. I swear, every time I say this, we still have someone comment on the video, well, why didn't you pick this card? Well, because that card's $15 or plus and the series is titled Sleepers. We are trying to find the cards that are still low in value, which is getting more difficult as this entire format gets older. But we think that they will go up in value because we think they have the potential of being played. Yes, remember that the format is evolving, and although there were no bans at this most recent banning, cards are still potentially going to get banned, and so the format will constantly evolve, and you may see some cards that you overlooked come into the limelight and really make an impact in the format. And one of those we think might be Dreadhorde Arcanist. Jake, why wouldn't you want to get your God's Willing, or your Shocks, or anything back from the graveyard to use again? No, this card is, yeah, dude, this card is so good. And uh, I, I think it's a card, you know, it's a card that's made an impact in modern, but this is one of those cards that is hovering around like the three to $4 range. So people do have it on their radar, but yes, it's like you said, anything that's gonna come back from the graveyard, I mean, it's, it and a repeatable act of doing that is right. just like, like it can't be overlooked. Yeah, yeah, love that. Um, Such a good card. Next up is Sarkon the Masterless. This is the finisher for the Super Friends decks that I see running around. Yeah, man. Uh, this makes me think of Just Guy, where you're kind of like harassing your opponent with like Teferi, and then you play Narset to draw into it. Into removal and then all and board of a sudden, wipe and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden you have, you know, these Planeswalkers that otherwise aren't doing very much. Right. And now Sarkin is turning them into, uh, you know, 4-4 four, four Flyers. Yeah, exactly. It gives you a way to play just a deck full of Planeswalkers and removal and still have a finisher, you know? Yeah, exactly. And something to think about with War of the Spark is this is a, this is a recent set. This set is still in print. And so a lot of these cards, they may not have a high price point for a long time it might be sets and sets down the road yeah but when a card does top eight in a popular format a format like pioneer that's on everybody's radar it does have the potential to spike so these are the cards seriously that if you are interested in playing these cards get them now because they could they could spike and then you're going to be like well i, I wish i had got them sooner we're Don't not saying go out and buy all of them Right, exactly. We talked about Dreadhorde Arcanist. This is a card that that card is prevalently showcased in the deck of Feather the Redeemed. Feather the Redeemed, the deck when it goes off, I've played this deck a lot, the deck when it goes off seems like it's unstoppable. Now it does need the pieces, Feather or Arcanist or you know some combination of both of them. It's really built, built around Feather because you can run out of steam if oh, you yeah. don't have oh, the yeah. Feather on the battlefield. However, when you get Feather on the battlefield, maybe turn four and you've got one white untapped so you have God's Willing ready for whatever their removal spell is, suddenly this deck becomes very, very difficult to deal with. Yeah, I completely agree. It really does feel like an unwinnable situation. And for a card that holds a price point of like $1.50 or $2 uh, and, and is such a good engine, um, yeah, it, it that's why it's on the list. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing that I like about this card's price possibly going up over other legendaries, because I always caveat whenever we suggest a legendary creature that it might be a two of, it might be a three of, the feather deck, you're running four because yeah, you, you need have to run feather. Four. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, 100%. And so that could cause the price to go up even further. Next up, we've got Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, a Planeswalker that's kind of weird because it might target yourself, you might target the opponent. It's definitely in something that is either mono blue or like 95% blue and runs six to eight of whatever your splash color is. But this, this Planeswalker's got the potential. What I like about this card is in the self-mill strategy. So 
and I know that that's it's such a Johnny strategy. <laughs> but let's say let's say you are playing a mill strategy, right. and then all of a sudden you're playing against an opponent that's running white, and they bring in Leyline of Sanctity, mm -hmm. and now you're no longer able to target them. That is when you would side in your Jaces. Right. That way you can target all of your mill at yourself, and now your opponent's ley lines are suddenly useless. So now your entire strategy is, it's time to mill myself and make sure that I draw my last card while Jace is on the field, and then I can win the deck, and my opponent's whole strategy to shut down them being milled is now negated. So that is that is the perspective of this card, is it is a, it is a sideboard tech, yeah. like you bring it in to you know, give yourself an alternate win con. But then also, you know, for red blue decks that that just draw a ton of cards and you get like a control matchup and all of a sudden it, it's like you have nothing to do but play your Planeswalker and try to mill yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen people try to shoehorn this into decks like Phoenix deck, but I think the general consensus is that it doesn't work wonderfully there. You'd rather do something else with that yeah. more mana, more impactful than two cards into your graveyard and you draw a card so you could potentially draw your uh, Phoenix and it doesn't give you any discard outlet. And then it's minus eight is essentially useless in that format, in that deck, because you don't want to draw the cards, you want them into the graveyard. So yeah, I really love it as sideboard tech of the mill. Next up, Narset's Reversal. This is the blue, blue version of uh, uh, the reflect spells that seem to pop up once every three set in red, red. Copy target instant, return it to its hand, which which is new for the blue one you may choose new targets for the copy yes and i think this is uh, another sideboard card but i think that this card is really really interesting because it does return it to their hand and it's one of those cards that has you know it had a lot of hype when it came out people were like "Ooh, this is an interesting effect and i think that narset's reversal if it is in the right deck can really, really make an impact in the format. I think that the card is really strong. Yeah, absolutely. We talked in a previous video in this Pioneer Sleeper series, make sure you go and check them all out, that we think that Expansion Explosion plus something like Wilderness Reclamation could make a splash. This is the perfect thing to say, um, Explosion for how much? Okay, Narset's Reversal. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, you can do that next turn, I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good, it's strong. So Spark Double here, I picked this one because there are so many strong Planeswalkers, why not just double it up? I saw somebody running a Simic deck pre the Oko ban that had two Spark Doubles, so they were effectively running six copies of Oko main board. Oh, that is just so gross and it's so brutal and yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. The the card is the card is really good. Again, it's redundancy. So I see this in like kind of like a control matchup. It would run really nicely alongside Sarkon. It's it's just nutty. It's yeah. really good and it's it's one of those cards that kind of goes overlooked in standard and you have to think in a wider wider range of, of cards in a format like Pioneer there might really be a place for it, even at four mana. Especially since it does enter with an additional loyalty counter. That would be interesting to look at which yes. Planeswalkers would grow that much more powerful because their loyalty was plus one. It can come on as a copy of a legendary creature or Planeswalker, obviously, and give you a second one of those. It just, it just seems really strong. Talking about cards that seem really strong and no one has proven it to me yet, Dreadhorde Invasion. How about a card that when it got spoiled, I was like, holy crap, we're gonna have Bitter Blossom and Standard. This is gonna be dope. And it just never really quite got there. Yeah, man, it never really panned out. And, um, you know, there's there's so much upside on this card where Bitter Blossom on the surface of what, what Bitter Blossom does is it makes individual fairy tokens. Right. Where this is like a, we are building on the same token over and over and over again. Right. And then... I, I, I have to say, Joel, I am as surprised as you because I think that the card is really, really strong. And unlike Bitter Blossom, once the token hits a certain power and toughness, once it's six or greater, it has lifelink until end of turn, right. which is negating all of that life loss, something that Bitter Blossom can't even do. So this is a card that I think always had a home in a control deck. I don't know how it never really took off. But I am excited for Pioneer because I think enchantments, we know, we know that they're sticky, and this is the kind of thing, it's it's low cost enough 
that I do think that there's a deck for it. It's just yet to be seen. I've seen it perform pretty well in decks like Sacrifice deck alongside cards like Priest of the Forgotten Gods. But yes, I'll tell yeah. you, whenever a zombie token you control with power six or greater attacks, it gains lifelink until end of turn. You want to know how many times I've seen that trigger onto the stack? A total of zero. A total of zero. That token always ends up dying. It ends up chump blocking and you paid some life for a chump blocker or they sacrificed it to some good effect because they built it into the right shell. But I just, for some reason, this deck, this card has just not taken off. I just don't understand. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think um, it's kind of like a long hold, but it's, again, it's a non-rotating eternal format. It is an enchantment. It is a powerful enchantment that I think in the right shell can really shine because on the surface and the way it reads, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you want to talk about a sacrifice deck, look no further for a finisher. This card has oh, yeah. been in standard. I've played it in standard. I love this card comes in sacrifice any of your creatures that you're going to get value off of sacrifice a few extra lands because who cares dies you can put it into uh it, your library there from the top plus it's a five six with menace i love this card yeah there's a lot going on on it and even though it is expensive i'm sure that if you're watching the video you're like oh but that costs five you know this is at the top of your curve right. or it's, you run like it's two of a control deck or whatever it is you built it into some sort of shell uh, Pioneer, because there are no fetch lands and because there's no faithless looting, which was or, or any effects like that that right. really give you know power and acceleration to a format, make things really really fast. I think that five isn't too expensive in order to be considered. The only real missed opportunity on this card is that there's not enough room for the text "Legendary Creature Zombie Alligator God" because that just would have been dope. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is It is pretty cool, though, because it's a zombie god. I mean, it's it's pretty sweet. Yeah, pretty new, pretty nice. That brings us back around to the beginning Dreadhorde Arcanist and to the end of this edition of Pioneer Sleeper Series. Appreciate you Pioneer. watching more of the Spark video. If you wouldn't mind hitting like, hit subscribe. Like we said, really helps us out. We would appreciate it. If you want to support us further, we've got a Patreon. The link is down in the description below. And never forget, we are streaming twice a week. Tuesdays, Jake. Thursdays, me evenings over on twitch jake i'm tapped out you got anything you, else you have all the stuff hey you have all the stuff i know i know you got all the stuff out well there's i appreciate nothing, it there's nothing to go go on about then we'll catch you later the video is over bye